So you're not a buyer of Tesla right now, and it seems like you're kind of moving away from the Mag 7 overall. I saw in your notes you say the next decade of AI disruption will increasingly happen beneath the surface layer. So tell us what stocks are beneath the surface layer that you would want to buy. Yeah, so uh, at Futurum, uh, a, uh, Futurum Equities, we created those Futurum AI 15 lists, not the non-Mag 7 names, uh, because History doesn't repeat itself, but often rhymes. During the dot-com era, all the attention was on the infrastructure, the struct structural arteries of the internet, IBM, Verizon, AT&T. But that wasn't the uh, hidden gems of that era. The hidden gems were the online marketplaces that were built on top of this foundation, the Googles, the Amazons. We at Future and believe that that's going to be a similar lineage for AI, where all the attention is on the hardware, it's on the computes, but the real winners are going to be the applications built on top of all this hardware. And we've seen the first disruptor in that second stage in Palantir. Mm -hmm. Palantir is building the operating system of AI. Everyone is, there's going to be a multi-trillion dollars of spend in AI for the next couple of years on LLMs, foundational models. In order for these LLMs to actually affect the real world, you need Palantir. So Palantir is essentially going to be the winner of all this uh, LLM arms race. And you're seeing the stock reflect that. And second name is uh, Cloudflare, for example. A lot of people don't know about Cloudflare, where they, they treat them as a CDN company. But it's so much more than that, because they're creating this offering in this AI boom, where it's creating these AI hotspots closer to where the real action is, aka the edge. You don't have to go straight to the data center or hyperscaler. So, that speed is really important, especially when Agentic AI hasn't even gotten started. And you're seeing their stock price essentially uh, go up 70% this year. I think that they're another name that's a premium multiple, but they're surviving the AI tsunami. So like, there's a handful of these kind of names out there where the market's comfortable paying up 100 times PE, 200 times PE, because the ceiling on AI is still being discovered right now. And the second stage winners are going to be the Amazons, the Googles of this era. And they're willing to make the bet on a 50 billion, 100 billion, 150 billion dollar company who doesn't really have the balance sheet to back up the valuation, but they're thinking that the market's going to carry it with a high tide result boats. Any other under the radar names that haven't necessarily seen this huge, impressive uh, performance so far this year, but that you expect will? I believe Snowflake. I think Snowflake is experiencing a similar narrative change as a uh, Google, for example, as a Tesla, where their whole spiel was a data warehouse company. And data is going to become a commodity in this AI world. So they thought, oh, AI is going to disrupt them. They're one of the priciest IPOs in history, potentially, a couple years ago. So I think that they got a new CEO. Frank Sleeman went out. He didn't really believe in the AI vision. They got a incredible CEO who's on a short list of becoming the open AI CEO when Slam, Sam Altman was going through that uh, weird PR <laughs> stint. <laughs> so I think that they got an AI visionary to run the ship and 40% of the Fortune 2000 data is stored in their ecosystem. That's so much leverage that they're capitalizing on that by becoming this foundation of data liquidity. Mm -hmm. And data liquidity is essentially moving around data in a clean and responsible way. Uh, if you want to make the comparison, is like Palantir is essentially the librarian. Snowflake's a library for AI data. You they don't compete with each other. They kind of need each other in the stack. And I think Snowflake is one name that's been penalized for years because that narrative change. And they've catch a bit this year. And mm -hmm. I believe that this is a name that they run a consumption model. So when business spending's booming, which I believe it's going to pick back up after this tariff uh, debacle is over with, the paralysis is done in business spending, I think they're going to uh, be a substantial beneficiary on this business spending that's going to be picking back up to make sure that they are in that AR race and their competitors aren't like beating them to it.